Welcome to part three, implementing your social media attack. So far, you should have taken the following steps to get ready to launch your social media attack. You should have signed up and got familiar with the different social media sites that you're going to use. You should have taken the time to learn how to use these different social media sites. You should have gotten a professional WordPress blog that either you're using as a site or it's directly linked from your main website and taking the time to learn the basics of using your blog also you might want to make sure that you've trained your key personnel that will be involved with your blog and how to post to it so here are some marketing facts that you may need to know and before I lay out the strategy I want to tell you something that I think will put this uh, type of work into um, perspective for you. I know people that are running businesses that are sometimes one and two man operations. They don't have a huge staff. They're quite busy with their regular portions of their business. Some are small businessmen and women that are computer consultants, plumbers, accountants, and so forth. Others have bigger companies that are running. Uh, the tactics I'm going to show you are strategies and methods that I was taught by them. They're actually doing this. So yeah, these are social marketing methods they're uh, in use by successful people of all sorts but they do work you can't have a half-hearted attitude about the implementation of this program nor can you expect people to flood your institution begging to get in you know involved with what you do overnight this is just like getting in shape or going to the gym it takes a lot of time and effort but eventually it will pay off so here's some um, marketing facts you need to know this is what is known as the rule of seven and basically what the rule of seven is is your prospect will on average have to see you or your marketing message or a combination of the two at least seven times before they'll decide to do business with you familiarity with you will make you um, more believable and more credible to them that's why the big co corporations that can afford it which 99 percent of us out here can't but that's why you see companies like coke and kentucky fried chicken they're constantly trying to get in front of you um, because they want you to be so familiar with their product and with who they are that you just naturally gravitate towards them. So the rule of seven, make sure they have contact with you or have seen you. This is very easy to do using social media to get in front of your prospect over and over again and actually communicate with them, interact with them. <clears throat> Another thing you need to be aware of is the emotion factor. People rarely make buying decisions based purely on logic. Emotion plays a huge factor in their financial purchasing decisions. So they're not going to be basing everything on total logic. So when you are throwing all of these high-tech terms at them and you're just telling them how great this is and that is, they're more concerned about what their needs are and how it affects them and their families more than anything else. Once they've made the decision to buy, they're going to go around and try to justify, and I mentioned this earlier in the uh, video, they're going to go around and try to justify the logical reason why they purchase it. So logic will come into view later on. The next thing I wanted to tell you about was a uh, thing called the connection principle. People want to feel like they're part of something. Top dog marketers refer to these as tribes or herds. Now, if you're not familiar with Seth Godin, I would highly recommend his uh, books. Seth Godin's book about tribes is how to get people to identify with your company so much they feel that they are part of your organization. And that's real important. That's what this whole thing about using social media is about, is getting them so familiar with you they think they're a part of you, and therefore they're going to want to do business with you. They trust. It gives you all sorts of credibility in the marketplace. Now, I just wanted to remind you that a very, very important thing to remember is that as a marketing manager, you have got to enlist the help of your staff. You cannot do this alone. You will get burned out. So if you can delegate some of these out, now if it's spread out between a whole bunch of different people, it will not nearly be as laborious as if you try to take the whole thing on and do it yourself. You will get burned out trying to do this whole program yourself. So make sure that you are working with your staff and making sure that they know what their part is and their role is and playing a part of contributing to this social media attack that I'm going to show you. Another thing you're going to need to do is you're not going to want to go into um, Facebook or Twitter under your own name. You're going to want to set it up for your company if it's not already set up. If your company already doesn't have its own Facebook business page or its own Google Plus page, you can learn how to create these. And you're going to go to the Social Media Examiner, which is right here. They've got how to set up almost for every single one of these sites. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, here's the one on how to set up a Facebook page, okay? Go to the Social Media Examiner. They've got it step-by-step step on how you can do that. It's an excellent resource, and I would refer to that over and over again. Make sure you bookmark it when you go there. So what I want to describe to you next is the matrix that is involved in putting together your social media structure. It's a real basic and easy one and you could add more sites to this and as you see it's going to get a little bit more complicated as we go through this. It's not hard to do but it, it will show you that you are trying to create a web of sites that are going to interact with each other and here's what I mean. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do of course is have your uh, website. If your company doesn't have a website get one. Now I know 99% of you out there snickering at this, but there are some companies that actually don't have a website. You'd be amazed at how many companies actually don't have a website. So for the few of you that don't, please get one because it's vital to your company's marketing strategy. The next thing you want to do is you want to connect that website to the blog. And as I said earlier on the video, uh, if you have a uh, normal hosting plan that is pretty popular like HostGator or GoDaddy, they include in their hosting program a simple way you can hook up a WordPress blog to your website. And you can have the website and the blog and bounce the, the two off of each other. Your website can be like showing the, like a brochure, an online brochure of your company's products and so forth. But the blog can also be a link that's on the home page that you click on that people can go to. And this is going to be the heart of your social media program. Once you have your blog set up, and you've gotten your webmaster to put it on there or you put it on there yourself you're going to want to sign up to Twitter and like I said before you're going to have to have a business account for Twitter go to the social media examiner site you can go in there and it'll show you how to set one up very easy once you have the Twitter page set up you'll want to do the same exact thing with Facebook go to social media examiner they have a page that shows you how to set up a Facebook account same thing with LinkedIn. You want to get LinkedIn on board with this because there's a lot of executives and people who buy uh, recreational vehicles and boats and uh, uh, ATVs, all the rest of it. Uh, these people have money uh, and they're in the marketplace. That's LinkedIn is not just a place to exchange business ideas and in resumes. Also, a Google Plus. And as I said before, Google Plus is really uh, the junior to compared to all of these but it is gaining a lot of trajectory very quickly and it's it's still a great place to interact and exchange ideas with people and uh, uh, so you'll want to make sure that you get a community site for Google Plus go to the social media examiner site and see how you can set up uh, a business page for your company finally considering that we are in the recreational boating business and all the other uh, vehicles all these different types of luxury vehicles you want to get on Pinterest Pinterest is a great way to show photographs of your products and then have people comment on them and collect them and look at them and review them and share them with their friends so I would not leave Pinterest out of the mix of this whatsoever okay so the very first step is what you're gonna do is you're gonna start posting to your blog so you're gonna have your company's website hooked up to your blog blog and the very first thing is you're gonna start w putting things on your blog but what are you gonna put onto your blog what are some of the things you're gonna do well you can really rack your brain with this of course there are current events and things that are coming up but uh, some of the things you should write about uh, you need to make regular posts to your blog and the reason I say that is Google likes uh, to see more content added to a blog. So Google will uh, reflect you in their pages, uh, in the search engine result pages, more uh, higher and more favorably if you're posting on a regular basis. Now this isn't any uh, shocking news to anybody, and you should already know this. This is all search engine optimization, but the more you post to a blog or more you're adding content to a site, the better off you are. And you can post things like sales events, specials that your company is having, Expos where you're displaying your vehicles so people can come and look at them. Things that are of interest to people, right? A good rule of thumb to remember is you want a certain percentage. Now, actually, you want a certain percentage to be personal things that are happening in your life. You can. You can have about 20% of your postings to be about what's happening in your sales staff, if somebody's getting married or they're having an anniversary. People find that those types of things are interesting, and you can keep adding those to your blog. You could also, but you're also trying to talk about the benefits 
a lot more than anything else of your products and showing off some of your new products that's another thing also talking about sales and other things but you really want to downplay selling quite a bit uh, there's a more sub subliminal way of selling using social media and that's just by merely saying hey look we got this new thing here it is take a look at it and that can be something that you can easily write about you know uh, in your blog post so just just give you some ideas of what you can do if you have a newsletter that goes out with your company and let's say somebody buys your uh, either buys your RV or your boat or whatever uh, or an ATV from you whatever they're buying from your company you can use newsletter material that you would send out to your uh, clients and customers in your blog and so you can just copy and paste that information and drop it right straight into your blog give it a different heading at the top and there you have a whole entire article you don't have to write 3,000 word articles by the way for your blog you can keep them short and simple 500 words it would be great if you can find 500 words to put in at your blog that reflects quite a bit to Google and if you did that like every day or every other day or at least once a week that would be great it will reflect in the search engine results pages brochure and sales letter material if you already have brochures written up you have the text file that was used you could use that you could talk a little bit about it on a personal basis write a couple sentences saying here's some information you may find interesting about this model that we have and then you just copy and paste the the uh, benefits or the uh, features of your um, vehicle or item into the into the blog that's all and drop a couple pictures in there real simple to do it's just like you know adding pictures to anything else Twitter or Facebook real simple you just upload them and drop them in there and it comes out really cool you have then you'll have a whole blog article written in no time so these are just some of the things I'm sure you can come up with other ideas as you go around but bear in mind you're going to involve your sales staff with this so you're not going to be doing it all by yourself everybody's going to have something to post uh, either about something they're de dealing with with your company or customers that are happy that's another one customer reviews customers that were happy that bought you can take photographs of those folks put them on your blog to show everybody and that's a great testimonial right there right so that's just some ideas to get you started on it so now this is where you should be at you have your company's site and you have your company's blog now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to post to your first social media site how you're going to get your first social media site involved with your blog and so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with Twitter so here's where you could find my site if you just type in RV copywriter I come out somewhere in the middle of the page here I'm on page one for it and when I click on that site it will take me to my blog and you'll see a whole listing of all the things I've written Plus, I have a pop-up. You can get this pop-up for free. It's called Hello Bar by Neil Patel. And he's a great uh, internet marketer that's come up, a young guy, and he's just blowing everybody's mind. But he came up with this thing called the Hello Bar. And you can get one of these uh, to get people to sign up with their email to your site. Uh, I thought I'd give him a plug there because it works so well and it's so easy to set up. It took me literally 10 minutes to set it up once I went to a site. And you can use it for free for a while, depending on how many emails you've got uh, collected. So it's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, uh, this is my site, and if you go down, you'll notice there's more blog posts. I've got a load of them on here, so forth, right? Uh, and mine are rather long. I try to give a uh, lengthy type of uh, articles that you can actually use. But when you go to the uh, one of the specific uh, articles I've written, to do that, you go to the site, and then you click on the title. So I'm going to click on the title. Now, notice up here, it's got just the name of my uh, website up here, and it's got... Uh, RV copywriter up here but let's say I wanted to get it with the whole title in here I'm gonna click on that because you want to get to where it shows your title up here as well once you click on the title you will see that the title appears in your URL up here right that's what you want you want to click on the title whenever you want to post uh, your blog post in a Twitter or something so that you get the URL that has your whole title in it so I'm gonna copy this or right click copy then I'm going to go to Twitter I'm going to drop that in here now Twitter only allows you to have so many characters per post so you can copy and paste the information that I just copied right into here and then you should type in what it's about so I 
just doing it as an example here. Here's an article how you can increase sales, whatever you're going to put in there, and you drop it in there. Then once you've done that, I would always recommend uh, adding a, f a picture. And Twitter will let you select whatever picture you want to. So I'm just going to randomly pick one here so you can see how to do this. So I'm clicking on this, and it gi it's giving me an option to select a picture, and there it is. And it will tell you here how many characters you have left so that if you want to add more to this, you can. Okay, once you're done, all you got to do is click on Tweet. I'll do that so you can see what I'm doing. And there it is. Uh, statistics have proven that a graphic posted along with your title and with your the URL you want to send people to will get much more clicks if you've got a graphic in there. So a uh, real important thing to know, but that's how you do it. So now you're at a place here where you've got people will click on this and it will take them to your blog. So if I click on this, booyah, there I go. I'm right at the blog and I'm at the article I referred to. That's very easy to do. Okay, so this is how you can take the same exact message you dropped into Twitter. You can drop it also into Facebook. Uh, I would use the company's web page to do this. Just drop the link. Now, you might want to change the beginning of this to something else. But at any rate, you're going to want to drop, copy, and paste it into here. And then you're going to hit post. Uh, but before you do that, once you drop this URL in here, you paste it in, you'll see some pictures pop up. And you can go through the different pictures by pressing on this little arrow here. So it'll automatically select a picture from the page you've selected, if you so desire, and you can pick which one you want to be on your uh, Facebook uh, posting, for example. You can do the exact same thing for LinkedIn, for Twitter, for Facebook, for Google+. They all do this. Uh, so the only one that's different will be Pinterest. Pinterest is the only one that's different. So anyway, when we come back, we're going to do part three of this. We're going to show you how to put the whole web together of your social media matrix. And then we're going to move forward from there. So I'll see you back at the next segment.